parts are gone already. Stripped. How's it looking? Pretty terrible. Here we go. Here we go. Ah, our battery's dead. Okay, guys, I got my battery acid in. And it came in through Amazon. It was a gallon and a half, and it only cost about $33. Here you can see the hazardous materials shipping label. You do not want to fill these up to the very top. Once it touches that piece of plastic, which is part of that intake, then you stop. So it's about an inch below the top of the battery. And I'm going to do the same thing for each cell. I'm just going to pinch off the hose, take a look. Now it's hard to see if the water is touching the, uh, the plastic, but when the water gets um, an impression on it, basically like a, it's a dimple in the water, that's when you know the plastic is touching the acid. So, just that little bit was enough to, to fill up that cell. I filled up the battery, I cleaned it off. Now I'm gonna charge it with my battery charger for a couple hours. And you see in automatic mode, it's not charging. It's already shut off. But I'm gonna switch it over to manual. I'm gonna let it sit there uh, for, I don't know, maybe until I go to bed tonight. Uh, I was part of an email just distribution for the junkyards and as soon as our vehicle came in, uh, it was going to notify us, and it's already Tuesday, so that was pretty quick. I signed up for it on the weekend. Monday, there was nothing, and now Tuesday, I got two emails. Uh, one junkyard saying they had some parts, but it was a different year. It's a 2006, and now uh, about an hour later, we just got an email saying that Dayton has one car. It's a 2012, and it looks uh, like it's in really good shape. The junkyard is about 30 minutes away from where I live, so we're going to run down there and hopefully we're the first ones to get our hands on these parts. Fingers crossed. Parking lot looks pretty empty. Today is a Tuesday and it's a work day, so I'd imagine you know most people who need these parts are at work. So let's see what we can find. Well, here it is. Spot 212, about 30 minutes past from when I got the notification, and it's already gone. So how is that? So I guess they're already selling parts before it's available on the email distribution list. That sucks. So I got the header panel slash radiator support. So I still need the hood, I still need the bumper cover. Those are the big items that I need. And it seems to me that like people are coming out possibly like every day and they're just taking these parts that are hot you know they're they're desired possibly they're selling them on the internet or something I don't know and uh, so I might have to either do what they do start coming out here every day or uh, buy, buy these parts online so I saw a hood on Craigslist they want $250 for it and it's the wrong color I saw one that's the right color, but they want $700 for it. I might have to just, you know, buy some parts a little more than uh, I thought. So here at LKQ, they only want uh, $50 for a hood. I'm trying. I'm trying to save some money, you know, but it's really just a waste of time. I wanted to show you guys the transmission lines before I throw the old one in the trash. So here is the, the old one. It's not looking too good. Probably had a few more years of life on it, but why risk it, right? So I already had it accessible, and so I ordered this one on Amazon or uh, eBay, and uh, it came from Texas. It's used, and I went ahead and spray painted it, and I moved these out of the way, and so I moved them down. I spray painted it, moved it the other way, spray painted it. So I believe it's still protected and coated even under those brackets. See the hood is there. I found it on Facebook. It's actually aftermarket. 
I could not find anything like it. You can see here is made in Taiwan. But it, it's overall it's in pretty good shape. It does have a ding on the front. And you know, so we're gonna pound that little ding back in. The hinges need to be replaced. The back of the, the hood is about an inch farther than where it's supposed to be. So yeah, these were hit pretty hard as well when the hood was hit. Here's my radiator and fan shroud. Let's see, here's my radiator support. The lights are on order. Uh, some of the marker lights are on order. The grill's on order. Man, they wanted so much money for the grill because it has uh, like the chrome pieces and everything. And these, everybody's grabbing these parts as fast as they can. I don't know what's going on with these. I thought there'd be a bunch of them. Um, so like everything I see is empty in the junkyards and they want like $200 for a stock grill. So I, I did what I had to do. I paid $200 and I am disappointed at the quality of this car. Um, you know, some of the, the frame rust, this car only has 45,000 miles on it guys. So you can see all these nuts and bolts are rusting. Also, there's some brackets down here that are rusting. You know, we're in Ohio, this is a salt environment, but I mean, come on, this, this should not be happening at 45,000 miles. And it just, it makes me really disappointed. You know, but they know this, they know this is what you get. They know it's gonna last 10 years. They know after that it's gonna be trash and then you're gonna be looking for a new car. So that's what keeps their pocketbooks fat. But hopefully times are changing now, like with the new uh, Tesla Cybertruck. I like the truck because it's, it stirs things up. It stirs up the competition and, um, you know, gets them kind of shaking in their boots a little bit. And people need to build better cars. And I think we are in a way because, you know, now they have timing chains, they have hybrids, they have you know, new technology to extend uh, fuel economy and range and, and all that stuff. But as a whole, they know they're taking advantage of us. They know that all these cars are going to be crap, you know, you know in, in 10 years, and then we're going to be looking for new cars. So that's why I like the Cybertruck. Right, enough of that. I'm going to get this transmission line in. I'm going to get the radiator in. So here we go. Look at the gaps between the fender and the hood. So that is the problem. It's not on one side or the other, it's on both sides. Let me open this hood really quick. When it was in an accident, the radiator support was hit right here. The radiator support cracked here and it really split open the sides of the, uh, of the car. So if you can imagine the, uh, the strut towers, both of those maybe sitting just a, a hair farther apart than where they were originally. And this, this mounting point here was hit really hard and it was, it was folded down under. And uh, so I, I pulled it back out. I bent it back into shape in a position where I think it, it is right. However, this area here as a whole appears to be maybe a quarter of an inch farther than where it should be. And the same on this side. So this area was not bent as much. Uh, I did straighten out this mounting point, but I do believe that this whole area here is, is farther than it should be as well. What I'm gonna do is try to use a cable winch. I'm gonna hit, hook it from this side to this side down here. And I'm gonna just try to just click it, see if I can squeeze these two sides together. Uh, this is the, the mounting point here, originally where it was originally bent. And uh, it's not the best setup. I'm gonna try to give it a couple pulls.
Well, I think that probably worked better than my original plan. Okay, this is a good bumper, but some of the areas need a little straightening. So overall, the bumper is good. All right, it's been a couple days since I made a video and we got the car running again. So we put back the fluids, the, uh, the coolant and the oil, we changed the oil and uh, everything's working well except for a few things. Um, the airbag connector was broken, so I can't connect that. Uh, I'll, be, I'll have to solder the connector back on. I, I already have that from the junkyard. I got the bumper. This is a painted bumper and it actually comes folded. So um, let's check it out. I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna unfold it and then put it in the garage so the plastic has a little chance to relax and um, hopefully it'll bend back into shape. And uh, we could also look at the color difference. Hopefully they, they matched it pretty well. And I'm not sure what's in that long box, so uh, let's check it out. I know what these are. I got these from Rock Auto. These are the uh, light bezels for the fog lights. Good. Ford OEM parts. Bezel one, bezel two. All right, that's it for now, guys. It's about 30 degrees outside. I can't even talk. And uh, so I'm gonna go get, grab some coffee, grab some lunch. All right, welcome to my house. I have the bumper inside the house to get it warmed up. And it's actually snapping back pretty well. Um, you can see just a little bit of a curvature right here where it was bent. And I've had it inside for about two hours and it's still relaxing, it's still coming back out. Uh, but it's looking pretty good. Here I am in my basement. I got the bumper down here to warm up and to uh, bend back into shape. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a chrome ring that goes around it. That's another $70. So I'm frustrated because this Ford has more parts and more cost than you know I'm used to. I really wish they just had like one bumper or something like that. You know, you go to the website, you go to the Ford parts website and it says, hey, this is your car, this is your VIN number, this is your uh, grill. But when you go to the website, it doesn't do that. It says, you punch in your VIN number and it says, okay, here's four possibilities. Anyways, I don't know. I mean, this is a 2011 car, it's a salvage title. Do I really care about a chrome ring? What are you guys' thoughts? Here's my bumper, guys. It's in my house because it's warm inside. It's cold outside. I have the chrome for the, the lower grill now. I have the clear marker lights. I have the fog lights and the bezel for the fog lights. So we're pretty much ready to go. Nothing is broken, everything looks good. All right, here's the car. I did replace that hubcap. That was like a dollar at the junkyard. I was really lucky to find it. All right, and the headlights are in. The hood is in. I had a hard time with the lights, but everything is together now. I was just making a stupid mistake. So there's a post right there and i was putting it in the wrong hole i was putting it in the bolt hole so nothing was really lining up over here and 
I believe everything is better now. Of course, it's not going to be perfect. There's a little bit of gap on the fenders and stuff like that, but it's looking pretty good. Now, I have the grill here. It's just sitting there on top. It's not bolted on. Um, and the next thing I have to do is attach the grill over here to the bumper, and then the assembly as a whole will come back over here. Without the grill, I'm going to test fit the bumper again, see how the bumper goes on. I know the grill is going to be okay. If the bumper is okay, I'm going to go ahead and put everything together. Here you can see the differences in the paint and there are very slight gaps between the fenders, the lights, and the bumper. Unfortunately, the differences in the paint also cause your eye to see the differences in the gaps. Overall though, I love the lights. Everything will look much better when it's painted. I can only hope that the paint on the hood is gonna match better than the bumper. Also, we are planning on tinting the windows. From there, it's gonna be a great looking car. Here's a quick look of the interior. It's pretty comfortable and I do like the black on silver look. It is a little bit plasticky and I do wish it has some kind of paddle shifter or manual shift mode. Hey, we're supposed to have nine people over today from Nicaragua. We have a turkey over there, we got pizza, we got country music planned, we got beer in the cooler. Everything is decorated, so we should have a good time. You guys take care and I hope you have a good weekend too.